Meanwhile, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, December 11th. Uh, before Christmas, and we're talking a little bit of politics. I know it's the most wonderful time of the year uh, for us, but if you're running for president, particularly if Joe Biden, uh, if you're Joe Biden, the newest Wall Street Journal poll with his lowest approval job numbers ever, uh, that first time ever favors Donald Trump by a couple, not good. And that is why he's calling out the cavalry, and he's saying, Hillary Clinton, I know you've helped me in the past, and I need your help with women, and everybody else who's a Democrat, as quickly as possible. And turns out she's uh, picked up the phone and she said, Joe, whatever you need. NBC News is reporting this. She's with him. Hillary Clinton steps out as a key player in Biden's reelection effort. So she is one of the most prominent, influential Democrats, a surrogate for mm -hmm. Biden's reelection campaign. She had a fundraiser at her house at the beginning of November. She raised a million dollars for his campaign. She sat on that Columbia University panel and shut down the heckler who was going after Joe Biden as being a warmonger. She published an op-ed in The Atlantic supporting Biden. She was on The View, and she's posting on social media support. Him. Right. Uh, this is the best news that Donald Trump could ever hear because he knows one thing. He knows how to, uh, to, beat, to her. beat her and to, to drive her crazy. Uh, <laughs> and, and remember, she does not draw crowds. She basically had to hire audiences mm -hmm. to show up. I think she could probably raise money because every Democrat knows him, uh, knows her. Uh, but uh, for the most part, that's what Joe Biden's going to need. It's nonstop surrogates. Gavin Newsom, Governor Pritzker, uh, uh, Sh uh, Governor Shapiro. And as Steve mentioned before, Obama usually comes in late. Right comes into the fall, right at the end. And, and, and the, the problem with that is if you come in in the last two weeks, people have been voting for a couple weeks already. already. Early voting. That's why you got to uh, have the debates in the summer. It's true. I, I don't mean to uh, bash losers, but I don't understand what he could gain from Hillary Clinton, seeing how that. She wasn't able to win. Right. It's the same for the Republicans. You know, it seems like all the losers have so much to say about the person within their party. You got Mitt Romney doing the same thing when it comes to Donald Trump, and someone that wasn't able to galvanize people to go to the polls. I just don't see how they can be influential in the next election. Well, you know what, Lawrence? Uh, right now, Joe Biden's got a real problem, a split in the Democratic Party mm -hmm. regarding his unwavering support for Israel. And Hillary Clinton has She's come been out. strong on it. She has completely uh, backed him to the hilt yeah. a couple of times, not only in The Atlantic, which uh, uh, Ainsley quoted a little while ago, but also out and about. And why that's important is because people look at Hillary Clinton as a former Secretary of State. And so she's got credibility. If Hillary Clinton says, you know what, we should be lined up behind Israel, people are going, eh, she's probably right. Well, what's interesting, too, about the, the female vote, mm -hmm. and a lot of guys might not understand this because women have such a heart for other people and even though you might not vote with her you might not uh, like some of her policies we didn't like what she did with her bleach bit and, and bashing the phones and all of that but you still can respect someone for serving our country her and for being secretary yeah. exactly and women are more prone to do that than I think men are. Because if I talk to some Republicans, right. conservatives, they'll say, she's a crook. We don't believe her. She's a liar. You know, I, Where did that don't crook like business her. come from? But, exactly, <laughs> but, but, don't you, but, but don't you think you contrast uh, Ainsley with Michelle Obama? Michelle right. Obama is she's somebody lovely. who gets She'll, big crowds. She he'll does bring her out. sell books like no one you've ever mm -hmm. seen. So uh, she is somebody, but she's always seemed somewhat reluctant mm -hmm. to come out. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure she's thrilled with Joe Biden. I think people that saw Joe Biden in action as vice president feel like David Axelrod. Mm -hmm. He wasn't good for eight years there in a lot of in a lot of ways. Wasn't strong at policy there. I can't believe he won. Women are, because women have tried to come so far and break that glass ceiling, I think that women are more supportive of one another. They don't want to bash them. They might not vote for them, but they try their hardest to mm -hmm. support one another. Well, anybody but Joe, that's what it is. Well, I think to, your, to your point, Brian, it goes back to what Obama said when he shoo in Hillary Clinton into the nomination. You know, you don't have to do this, Joe. You don't have to run where they discouraged him not to run in that election. And I think there's a similar tone going on within the Democratic Party. You served your purpose of taking out Donald Trump. You don't have to do this. Pass it on to another generation. But the White House thinks much different. They say they want that to he's the only power. one that right. can be Donald Trump. Because they want to stay in influence exactly of the right. Biden administration. Right. Although Joe Biden said last week, yeah, there are probably 50 other Democrats who could beat uh, Donald Trump. But the thing about Hillary Clinton, though, 
for her to come to the rescue of Joe Biden. Yeah. They hate each other. Yeah. Remember, so he, it was back in 2016 when essentially uh, Obama said, you know what, I'm, I'm going with Hillary. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. And Joe was the vice president. But she hates Donald He's Trump. He's not going to forget that. But one she of the reasons Donald Trump. One of the reasons was Bo just died. And he goes, listen, you're, in, you're not in shape to run. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk about the Wall Street Journal poll that came out over the weekend. Head to head, you know, Donald uh, Nikki Haley. If it's those two candidates, If right? it's these two candidates, Nikki Haley wins by 17 points. This is stunning. You know, in gigantic. some polls, he was up as a, much as 11, but this is a gigantic win. Uh, Trump wins by four, mm -hmm. which is impressive, considering the amount of court cases and negative publicity mm -hmm. that constantly come at him. So he's, this is about the fifth straight poll that Trump has done. But how unbelievable is it? I don't remember a time in which somebody trailing Donald, trailing in the primary by 40 points mm -hmm. in most elections, about 20 in uh, Iowa, uh, a little bit less in New Hampshire, even trailing in a home state of South Carolina, but head to head against the current president right. mm -hmm. wins by, is up by 17 points. Because there are a lot of independents. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of women that are frustrated with the Democratic Party that usually vote Democratic that love Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. They've watched her on the world stage as an ambassador. They saw what she did in South Carolina when she took down the Confederate flag. Mm -hmm. Women like that. Women like that uh, she's been such a leader. She's smart. She... Um, She's a minority, and she has a lot of experience. And what she said about abortion, look, you can kind of choose what you want. I don't agree with it. I don't like it. And re most Republicans don't. But independents might say, I don't like it. I would never have an abortion. Right. But let's don't make this our focus. But this just goes to show you uh, the difference between a primary and a general election. She would blow out Joe Biden in a general election. But right now, Donald Trump has got so many Republican primary voters aligned with him, it looks, unless something crazy happens, you, at this point, the poll is, suggest he's that, gonna be the nominee. Well, the poll, poll would suggest that people on a national basis would take your typical Republican. Mm -hmm. um, Nikki Haley is a traditional Republican, whereas you have Donald Trump is more of a wrecking ball candidate that wanted to change and has changed the Republican Party. So voters are okay with it as a whole. The problem is she would never win, in my opinion, just being out there in the country, a Republican primary. That Republican Party without is Trump today. Without well, Trump? She, well, without could, Trump. she could with... Good point, Brian. Yeah. You don't think she'd win without Trump? If Trump is not the nominee, not on the ballot, she there's would, a potential she would, yeah, to win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do but, you think he'll choose her as the vice president? I don't know. I think it's the potential. They haven't been nasty toward each other. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, bird brain, some... bird brain is an endearing yeah. phrase. Well, no, but I'm saying that, that, that him and Ron DeSantis have been... They, they, they broke up for good. <laughs> it, it is, I can still see Nikki Haley being welcomed back I, somewhere on the ticket. She calls him the chaos candidate. They were friends. I don't think he would... She would ever take it if he offered it. Uh, the other thing, and Why you mentioned Ron. I think she would. She would definitely take it. Nah, I don't think so. I disagree. I, uh, because I think she thinks in four years I could run for president. But as she vice could. president, she becomes vice but president, as vice she'd president, have a better shot. Uh, you mentioned Ron DeSantis. In this Wall Street Journal poll, Ron DeSantis ties mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Yeah. But Nikki Haley beats Joe Biden by 17. I think and, the story of Ron DeSantis is. is quickly coming to an end right here. Because um, she is eclipsing him. Yeah. Although he says the surprise is in Iowa. Mm -hmm. He's went to all 99 counties, got the governor. Uh, he's got that uh, evangelical leader, Bob Vanderplatz. Yeah, well, don't count him right. out. It might not be this year or next year. Yeah. But in the future, he's still young. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot, of, a lot of people say that. Yeah. Uh, they like Ron DeSantis, mm -hmm. but maybe not right now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.
Excuse me? Are you disappointed to have me debating on Wednesday? No, I think not a lot of people are going to be watching. They're about Trump. 70 points down, so I don't think too many people are. Are you concerned about testifying on Monday with the Jackson? Yes, come on, let's go. Hey, Did she not? Did she oh, not? no. She didn't, didn't even vote for You me. know, I have your thing down. I have your thing back there. Are you the only one running against right. You're running in the Republican primary. Right. You could beat her. With your help. He will. With my help? Yeah. They're batting about 99%. But I want what to do help you. Think? you. Yes. What do you think? Take a picture. Take a good picture. Is this your guy up here? Here, come on. Thank you, President. Which is your camera? This one? No, mine's right, right, right there. Okay, right let's go. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Let me Got have it. one with him alone now, okay? I'll do it. Oh, we'll you I'll text him. Maybe we'll use this if it's good. Hold oh, lift hold it up higher. Let me get to the photo. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Got it. Okay, let's, let me see what that looks like. That's a nice picture. Are you sure he's good? Yes. yes sir. Yeah. He loves the Lord. He loves the Lord. And you're a pastor, right? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I don't it for 25 years. That's not one of our best. That's why you're doing it. Well, and how about uh, the Democrats? A little tough, the Democrats. It's just sort of a, uh, even, it's just kind of weak uh, because of the leaders of Iowa. You beat her in the primary, though, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I have your card, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We're praying for you. <laughs> this is a big event here, you know. This guy. Yeah. That's risky for me to do. You know that, right? President Trump, will you be watching the debate tomorrow? No, I won't. I'll be doing something. Else. Well, it looks like they want to do it. And deserves it, but uh, that's up to them. That's going to be up to them. President Biden said he was running because you were running. Do you have any comment on that? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt that. They don't want me to run. You know, it's very interesting uh, with what they're doing. Democrats are funding Nikki Haley. Democrats are funding Ron DeSantis. And everybody wants to run against Biden. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are you okay? Everything? Did that picture turn out good? Hello, everybody. Was the media there? Were you guys there? At the, were you at the, huh? No, but, oh, I see. We love
We love the Lord. We love the Lord. Yes, we love. Thank you, sir. President Trump, any comment on the gag order staying in place? Well, basically, they're afraid to have me speak because I speak the truth. So they try and gag me. Never happened in the history of our country. But, you know, they do gag orders because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear me speak. So in many ways, it's an honor. Because if they wanted to hear me speak, they wouldn't do the gag order, right? Exactly. Thank you for that question. It's a good-looking group of people. So are you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. We love you, Trump. Let me see that baby there. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We love you, President Trump. Thank you, Donald. We love you. Thank you very much. We love you, Mr. President. Uh, yeah. Wink yeah. 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 for you and your family. God bless you, President Trump. Take a look. Yeah. Can you I've sign? Can you please sign? I've been hearing sign? a lot about it. Okay. Can you please sign? I will. Show me. Thank you. <laughs> and I want a picture. I want a picture. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump. President Trump. Thank you for running. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. much for taking all this guff you got to take. All this heat from these people, and yes. the, including the media, yes. which are right here. Yes. 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 Including, the fake, including the fake news. Exactly. You told us that they're coming after us next, Trump. They are. Thank you for taking the heat. are never going to get a chance. We appreciate that. never going to get a chance. Thank you, thank you. The committee screwed over four states. That's because they had him. DeSantis was doing his job. You know, you got to lobby for this. Alabama, they lobby. They're smart, they lobby. The Santos was not doing his job. You know that, right? Yep. Undefeated team didn't make it. Hi, everybody. Thank you. 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 I'm over chick. Mr. Trump, my wife is right behind me. Can I get a picture with you? She's good. She's good, Scott. Thank you. 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 Thank you for everything. We'll give it Trump. Thank you for everything Thank you. Tracy, we just can't. I will. I will. I love you. I love you. Thank you. We love you, President Trump. Yes. Thank you so much. It's good to meet you. I have a meeting in Congress. I hope it's good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like the endorsement? Oh, no, you're, you're the fake news media. So oh, yeah, yeah, fake news. Are you the fake news? So who are you with? Who do you work with? That's very good. Oh, Say hello. Say hello to him. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You think I should endorse? You don't want to comment on that. That would be a big endorsement. We need That would be a big endorsement. Yeah. David's a, let me tell you, David's a very good man. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. One more, one more. This is my favorite president right here. My favorite president. Thank you, everybody. Oh, well, Mary, it's all mine.
President Donald Trump is under fire from the DeSantis campaign for accepting the endorsement of a BLM co-founder out of Rhode Island. Trump said on Truth Social that he spoke with Mark Fisher yesterday, a great guy, very honored to have his and BLM support. I have done more for black people than any other president since Lincoln, including 10-year funding for historically black colleges and universities where they had none, opportunity zones, criminal justice reform, and much more. Thank you. To Mark. Uh, the DeSantis campaign responded by calling it a confusing love fest between Donald Trump and BLM's extremist leaders. Um, they released a statement, of course, criticizing Trump for accepting that endorsement, saying that they were responsible for rioting in 2020, so why would you allow them to endorse you and be so excited about it? Look, Trump loves a riot. Do you remember when six? <laughs> like, what's, what's the difference? If everyone wants to draw these comparisons, look, this whole thing is kind of um, silly, starting right. with what the implications are supposed to be if, for Trump getting this endorsement. What does it mean that Trump is now sympathetic to BLM? We're supposed to believe that their interests are aligned. We're supposed to believe this man represents the interests of BLM. Even before you get into all of the BLM chapters, apparently, disavowing that this guy uh, was a co-founder. So when they say co-founder, what they mean is that he, alleg he alleges that he co-founded the BLM Rhode Island chapter, right. um, and the Rhode Island chapter made a statement on Twitter saying that we'd like to clarify that Mark Fisher is not and has never been affiliated with our organization. The views expressed by Mr. Fisher in the reference Fox News segment do not reflect the values or beliefs of BL BLM Rhode Island PAC. So uh, e e even if you do have this guy's endorsement, why would Trump go out of his way to kind of tout it on Truth Social? I just, I feel like people kind of forget that Trump is sort of a, like, extremely pragmatic populist guy. He's not really an ideologue. And so I think he just likes that this guy likes him. And he's like, yeah, BLM likes me now, even though I've, like, brought in the National Guard to put down riots. And he just doesn't care. I, th I actually, I think the DeSantis campaign's response is um, kind of indicative of how very online they have been and how that has not served DeSantis very well on the campaign trail. I mean, to really, like, handering about it and get on their, their soapbox is a, a little ridiculous. But I think we actually have the clip of um, the, the original endorsement on Fox News from Mark Fisher. So let's take a look at that. I think personally, it's the duplicity of the Democrats, mm. the hypocrisy. Um, we're not stupid. The brothers are not stupid. We, we understand when someone's for us and when someone is not. And it's obvious that the Democratic Party is not for us. Yeah, I, I can't. Their, party, their, their, their policies actually strike at the heart of the black family and the nuclear family. Yeah, so... You know, you were a part of Black Lives Matter. Uh, you founded it there. And now you're saying, you're, you're not saying the entire Republican Party. You're saying Donald Trump. So what is it about Donald Trump? Is it the economics? Uh, you noted the black family. What is it going to take for him to sure up this support amongst uh, black voters? 
Well, I just, I just think that it's going to take information. A lot of people are misinformed. They don't really understand because they don't educate themselves on, on Donald Trump as a person and his history. Um, but if they do that, and it's going to take, you know, leaders, educated leaders, getting the word out there. Um, I think that it, it'll happen on its own and it'll be organic because um, personally, I love the man. I mean, how could you not like? So it's clear when you watch that clip what this is all about. It seems like people are hopeful, conservatives are hopeful, at least this Fox News pundit and Donald Trump are hopeful that this endorsement could be a gateway to Donald Trump doing better with black voters. I think the problem with that is that guy doesn't represent—I mean, everyone's an island. You know, that guy doesn't represent black voters. I don't think any black voter turning into Fox News is going to say, well, if that guy's on board, <laughs> uh, I am too, especially given that they're really stretching this uh, co-founder of Black the Lives Matter. The BLM, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's why, again, like, the DeSantis response is so annoying because they're, like, making hay out of something that's a very tenuous connection at this point. Um, and look, Trump is doing better with black voters right. than pretty much I was any other say, person I'm, with 20 percent of the black vote at per recent polls. So like Trump is go good without this. And I think it's largely because of people's disaffectation with the Democratic Party mo more so than what Donald Trump is doing per se. But it, there is something that strikes me as very interesting that despite all of the criticism of kind of woke politics and identity politics and all of those things that you get coming from the right, when there is an opportunity to hold up yes. a person from a marginalized group Ugh. and say, this, we got one. And like tokenize we it. I know. They'll and do it. it. It drives me insane. And like, if there's any criticism, I think of Trump to be had here, because I, I like arguing that accepting the endorsement for Mark Fisher is like a tacit endorsement of any violence that might have occurred from BLM protest um, is is, again, very tenuous. But the, <laughs> the way that he talks about his accomplishments sometimes for the black community, as he oh, puts yeah. it, is uh, very pandering. I mean, the, the listing of the opportunity zones and the criminal yes. justice reform. And um, a lot of populist right individuals, myself included, ahead of the 2020 election were very critical of the campaign that Trump ran and that he kind of lost himself the election because he really, the strategy that was pushed to him and he accepted from people like Jared Kushner, Kushner in the administration was that he could win solely by trying to boost his numbers with minority voters. Mm. And from a strategic standpoint, from a realistic standpoint, Getting a one to two percent gain among black voters is not enough votes to win you an election. I, mean, I don't know. It's enough to cost Democrats an election, and that's the but same th thing. But that's a, I mean, that's a larger portion of their base, though. I mean, but that, and, and the people. The but I think the people that would have per perhaps voted for Trump because of opportunity zones and criminal justice reform yeah, were not people that were going to defect from Biden. I, I agree. I, I agree in part. I mean, I, look, I do think that Donald Trump needs to create a credible veneer that he doesn't hate black people to get even kind of these marginal sympathy votes or um, protest votes. And to that extent, doing something for criminal justice. He did, working with um, Van Jones and right. Kim Kardashian, get a bunch of people out of jail who Obama could have pardoned but didn't. I mean, that stuff isn't nothing. And seeing him standing there and doing that and saying, oh, he let Alice Johnson out. He got that black grandmother out of jail. I don't think that's nothing. At the same time, Time, like I, I it is it is I think a betrayal of the fundamental kind of ethos that Republicans have putting, been putting out there that we want to be colorblind we want to be race blind that we don't care about all of this stuff until obviously it comes to the nitty gritty of earning votes. Your, to your point, Donald Trump is the guy who said, I have a great relationship with the blacks. I've always had a great relationship <laughs> with the blacks. I mean, he's that guy. Yeah. But he's also the guy who, before he started getting into politics, was in a bunch of, he was a, he was a cultural icon. He was, yeah. a, he was in Home Alone. He was in a ton of rap songs. Right. And he has a certain kind of um, bravado and a kind of confidence that I think makes a lot of people from a lot of different communities want to buy into a shtick. Not to mention the fact that he is also doing very well with Latino voters. Sure. And that is integral to the future of the Republican Party. And he desegregated Mar-a-Lago before that was like an in What do you mean? He, it mar so all the, the clubs in Florida were, were segregated um, up into like the 80s or 90s. And Trump was actually the first to desegregate his club in, in uh, the I bet area. there's a story there. I bet there was one black celebrity who said something nice to Donald possibly, Trump. But and the, Donald Trump the, was the like, city, Let's bring him the in. The city actually like, wanted to sue him for, for desegregating. It was a huge deal because um, when the Sheldon Whitehouse story came up about his club being segregated, oh, right. uh -huh. um, he tried to like turn it 
around on Trump, and it didn't work because of what happened in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> but um, I, mean, I guess doesn't absolve him for the first time he was ever written up in the New York Times. It was because he was a slumlord over a segregated house. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess, point being, <laughs> like, potato. I guess, point being, like, he wasn't this, um, like, a lot of people kind of perceive him as being this like crusty old Republican when. It, like it, like you said, he was a pop, Democrat in pop culture and in, and in his business. Like he was actually kind of novel in the way that he treated his relationships with people of color. But I would also, I, I guess, ask. I mean, we're running short on time, but I've, do you think that perhaps the reason he's performing better in the polls now with Latinos and Black voters, um, particularly Latino and Black men? is because there hasn't been as much pandering and there's more economic strife that is sort of equally affecting of all Americans, but particularly like working class people of color? I honestly don't think it's that that complicated. I think Obama happened, people were very disappointed and became more disaffected because they thought, well, if there's a black guy in charge, then maybe someone will actually listen to our concerns. Mm. That did not happen. He was followed up by Obama's choice for VP, who was chosen specifically because he has a history of being, frankly, an ally of segregationists and not exactly the most woke guy on the planet who was supposed to balance out people's concerns about having a black president. That guy is now president walking around talking about how you're, you ain't black right. if you don't vote for me <laughs> and telling weird, creepy stories about how he worked at an integrated school uh, pool and all the white ki- all the black kids rather like to feel his blonde leg hairs. Mm-hmm. That's who Joe Biden is. So I think that it's as much Joe Biden turning people off as Donald Trump at least having cultural capital with lots of people in a pop culture way, including black people. Um, and I also think that Donald Trump, going back to this original story, he's a guy, like it or not, who if you say a nice thing to him, he'll like you. And sometimes that can have good benefits. That's how he ended up waving those pride flags and being like the oh, most pro-gay I know, Republican. Because some gay Republican somewhere said, hey, I like the cut of your jib. And he said, you know what? Give me that flag. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how progress is made sometimes. I don't know, man. All right, stick around. We're rising for you after this. So I got a couple of good videos for you today, and this first one's really important. We need to see some change when it comes to what I'm going to show you in this first video, and some of you might have some personal experience with this. It's when you're out there in the public and people try to put you down for being a Trump follower. They try to bash you or shame you for these things. You know, simple stuff like you believe in energy independence, freedom, liberty, fair trade agreements, getting out of endless wars, border security, that type of stuff. But then when you're out there in the public, people don't want to serve you. They try to mistreat you. They try to say mean things to you. Well, what happens if you're a black American Trump supporter patriot and you're out trying to eat some food with your family and the server doesn't like the fact that you're a Trump supporter? Well, I think you should do what this guy does. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to point something out to y'all. Can I get all y'all's attention for a second? Y'all see that young lady right there? Oh, hold on a second. Excuse me, ma'am. You are the waitress. What's your name so we can know? Shay. Hi, Shay. Say hello. That's Shay. Let me tell y'all something what, what just happened with Shay. Now, Shay is the waitress for Hooters. Shay walked up to me and she said, saw my hat and said, are you a Trump supporter? Yes. Whilst on her job. Yes. So this is what I was trying to tell y'all about how, for some reason, our women act like being professionals just ain't nothing they got to do. Because I don't care what kind of hat I had on, if you are servicing the people, yeah. Would you then look at a person and say, what kind of, why you, do you, do you support Trump? And then when I said, yeah, she. Dude, what the fuck's up, dude? We're spending money here, dude. And you're spending money and you, you, I'm spending money. This all is revolving around a tip. Now, this brother was just trying to buy me a drink. That's all he was trying to do. And he told her, can you get a drink? She saw my hat, and the hat was offensive. Ha! Uh, Trigger. Trigger. Emotional responses. All I wanted to show y'all is most of the time when y'all see me do these videos, I think I'm making it up. I'm not. This is real world stuff. And, huh? You're not on my camera. I'm pointing at myself. Well, just like everybody else who's coming and do it. But I'm filming now. No, I can't. No, I can't. Now, please call the police. No, I can't. I'm filming right now. Anyway, I'm still going. And see, this is what I'm talking about, y'all. You got to understand what we have to deal with, with black folks acting like this. So she's going to sit here and try to talk to me and tell me I need to take her off my damn camera. camera. Well, I'm still filming, and I'm not taking it off. So you can call the police. And y'all see this. This is what's happening. 
Then he's gonna sit up here and tell me. You're gonna take me off your car. Do y'all see this? When when the normal people in here <laughs> so do y'all think I'll make this up now? Do y'all think I'll make this up now? That an individual will sit up there, you should have left me alone when I was asking you for a drink. You shouldn't have asked me what about my hat. You should have brought me my drink. So what I'm going to do is if she brings the manager, I'm going to let the manager know. Thank you, dear. I'm going to let the manager know. So I hope she brings the manager down here. Thank you. Thank you. My political affiliation is none of your business. Hey, that's not your business. That's not personal. You're in a job. You can get hurt. This is work, dude. Now, there we go. This is what I'm talking about. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking he went a little too far with it. He dragged it on a little too much. But this is why he didn't. Because when people are Trump supporters out there in the public, they're wearing the MAGA hats. They're constantly being shamed and being put down for this. Even simple things like, you didn't vote for Trump, did you? I mean, you're not a Trump supporter, are you? Like, simple stuff like that. Like, oh, you must be crazy if you support Trump. What do you mean crazy? It's common sense policy to support Trump. I get it. You might not like the guy. You might not like the things he says or the things that he tweets. But his policy is America first and it's for the citizens of the U.S. It's common sense and it's smart. And people need to be sick and tired of this being put down in public. And the only way to stop it, to make people think twice about doing this in the future, because I guarantee you that young lady waitress probably won't do this again. The next time she sees somebody, she's probably not going to try to ridicule them or put them down and say, oh, you're a Trump supporter. Please, you're not, are you? And I love the fact that we're seeing black and brown Americans who are starting to pick up this mantle. I hope that it emboldens you. Maybe you don't go as far as he did. I don't, you know, it's not my personal style to be that aggressive about it, but certainly stand up and have a backbone for what you believe is right. Do it respectfully, but speak up because you know it's true. I said I had a second video for you and I did. And so what I'm going to share with you is another black, proud American patriot. But this gentleman, he's at a school board meeting and he's going to absolutely school these board members. Check it out. Hello, Navarro. Suck any good lately. What's wrong, Navarro? I think you like a big in your mouth. Ha ha ha. Page 23. The other boy. Here it is. What's the educational benefit of talking about the What's the educational benefit of talking about that? Is that going to help someone on the SAT score? You will be kind. Get a shot of that. She can care less. That's a sign. She needs to put down her sign. Respect. Oh, you're putting me out. For what? For asking you to, ab to abide by the rules. A board member held up a sign, but the audience couldn't hold up signs. This is tyranny, and we're dealing with a corrupt government system. Once again, speaking up for what's right and how hypocritical this gentleman is reading this book and then the board has the audacity to say that's inappropriate. Stop reading that. Meanwhile, this book, he picked it up in their library for kids to read, but they can't read it at an adult board meeting. That's the whole point. Why is this book even in the library? Even if you want to claim as an educational facility that you want to introduce children to new ideas but not pornography. This has no place in a school district. These public school districts need to be focusing on those basics, making sure that these kids are proficient in their math and English and science and social studies, and we're even failing in that. We can't even get that right. Meanwhile, we're putting this kind of stuff out there, and I love the fact, again, that we're seeing proud black patriots who are bringing up this mantle because the simple fact of the matter right now is that black and brown Americans, and you better believe this, have a lot of power in what they're saying right now because I believe if that community is saying something, people are going to pick up and listen to it. And I love the fact that we're seeing these groups, these communities starting to really get it. And and I maybe I think that they got it before, but just getting out there and speaking about it and being bold, having a backbone about it. And I don't want to say ridicule. You want to be as respectful as you can to people, but standing up for what you know is right. And this is wrong to be in a library like this, this book with these graphic descriptions in them. 
Kids don't need to be picking this up in a school. They can get this kind of garbage in so many other places. The last place they need to get it is in the school library. Unless there's some ulterior motive to this, which there almost certainly is, to break down moral boundaries, to bring down our social structure. This stuff needs to stay out of our school district. I love these two videos. I love these two men. And I hope it encourages you to stand up. And as you do, like I said, be respectful as you can, as respectful as you can, but stand up for what you know is right and for what you know is true because you are on the right side of this. There is a good and there is an evil and you are on the good side of this. You know it's true, so stand up for it. Just wanna leave you with that encouragement. I'll catch you on the next one. Here's a question for you. Just how far are the radical left and inside the Beltway bandits willing to go to stop him? We all know they hate him for winning the fight to protect life, for exposing their deep state, for draining their precious swamp. And they already know he'll crush Biden. So like a pack of rabid wolves, they attack. So let's impeach him. Let's get tainted radical left prosecutors to charge him. Let's conspire with Hillary and the FBI with fake stories about him all to distract from Biden's incompetence, weakness, and money-grabbing corruption. But here's the thing, he'll never blink. That's called having the courage of your convictions. And it's why he's our president. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message.